Hey YouTube, Epilidev here. Uh, we're in our third video on the Programming 101 series. Um, in our last video, we wrote and uh, ran our first program called uh, Hello World, which just utilized the printf function. Um, and so today, we're going to take that one step further. And by take that one step further, I mean we're going to go backwards a little bit. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back to the very basics. I mean, we're going to actually get rid of that printf line, and we are going to start off at the very beginning now. What I'm going to show you is all languages have something called primitive data types. Um, and primitive data types are data types that essentially hold very basic information. They can hold whole numbers, decimal numbers, individual characters, or Boolean values like true and false, um, or some variation of that based on what language you're programming in. Um, so there are several primitive data types. Uh, C has eight that you're really going to need to know. Um, so that's actually what we're going to cover today. So we're going to cover those eight primitive data types. So first you have ints. Um, and an integer, or int stands for integer rather, an integer mean is essentially a whole number. There are no decimal points. Um, it is just a whole number. It could be 5, it could be 560, it could be 560,700. Um, it can be any whole number. But the thing about an int is that it's only 32 bits long. So in computing today, when we're starting to move into 64-bit machines, you're going to want to use a different uh, data type, which I'm going to move into here in just a second. Um, but essentially, that's what an int is. An int is what we're going to be using most of the time, just because we have no need to use the extra space that a long requires. And uh, there's no reason to use a short integer, just because there's no reason. Um, so essentially, the next data type is called long. And what a long is, is... Um, we'll make it that. Um, a, a long is essentially the 64-bit version of an int. Um, holds the exact same type of data, but it holds a lot more of it. Um, to give you an idea, uh, if for something that's 32 bits long, uh, that means that it can hold um, 2 to the 32 um, numbers. It can hold 4.2 uh, 4 or 4.3 million, or 4.3 billion numbers, sorry. 64-bit number gives us so much more space there. You can see it can't even fit an e to the 19th. Um, so, just so much more memory, um, just holds so much, mo so many more numbers, it can hold so much more data, um, that along, and that's why we're moving to 64-bit computing, because it's so much more efficient, you can have so much more data, and the computer process it, processes it in the exact same way. Um, so that's a long. Uh, the next data type is called short. Um, and that's essentially the same thing as an int, but it's only half. This is only 16 bits long, um, so we'll make it roughly half of an int. Um, so it's only 16 bits long rather than 32. So it holds a little bit less data, and this would be used in an application if it's a really big application where memory is at a premium, and you know that you're not going to be holding a huge number or whatever, you're going to want to use a, a short, because that's going to save memory and still hold the same amount of data. Uh, the next one that we're going to go over is uh, what's called a what's called a double, and a double is um, a floating point number. Um, a floating point number is essentially just a decimal uh, for you know the same type of decimal that you've been learning for years. It's just a decimal number. Um, that's it. So. Um, I mean, that's pretty simple. The double is like the int of floating point numbers. It's the 32-bit version, um, which means that there are, there's also something called a float, which is the 16-bit version. And there is something called a long double. Uh, you can't just use the keyboard long because that's already reserved for ints. So you have to say long double, and that'll make it a 64-bit double. Um, so... That's it. Um, so that's all you need to know for that. Um, and there are two more, lastly. Uh, first, there is something called a char. And a char is a single character. Um, it can hold 
a lowercase a and hold a capital A. It can hold an H, but you notice if I try and put two H's in, it's going to give me an error here. You see um, multi-character constant. Um, so the unused variable we're not going to worry about, but unused character constant, or multiple character constant, is the one we're going to worry about because you can't have that. A character, can, it's just that. It's tr if it was called chars, then you'd be able to have multiple, but it's just char, one character. So we'll just put a C in there for char. Um, and last but not least is something called a Boolean value. Um, a Boolean value was invented by this guy named Boolean. Crazy. Um, and, well, actually, his name was Bool. Um, and they call it Boolean because just calling it a Bool doesn't make sense, which, of course, is why C calls it a Bool. Um, anyway, so this guy invented this type of measuring things where it's either a yes or a no. There's no in-between. There's no... It's either a 1 or a 0. There's no 0 0.5, um, to put it in simple terms. Um, so essentially, C has a sort of fake way of doing this. Um, and the way that C does this is... Um, well, the first thing is, uh, you have to look up here. You see this pound include stdio.h. That stands for standard input output dot h. Um, don't worry about what the dot h means. Just understand that it's the standard library. It's the C standard library. That's what has the printf. That's what has all of these data types. Um, but because bool is a separate data type that um, isn't really specific to any one type of program, they have you import it as needed. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to say pound include, um, and we're going to say std bool dot h, and uh, closed caret thing, um, and that'll be that. So now, if we come down here, we can say bool, my bool equals yes, or sorry, uh, equals true. Uh, in Objective-C, which you'll learn if you watch my other tutorials, uh, Objective-C uses yes and no. Um, but for this, true. Um, so those are the eight different primitive data types that you're going to need to know. Realistically, I'm only going to be using uh, four of them. Um, oops. I'll realistically only be using um, the in int. I'll probably be using doubles most of the time. And I will be using probably not chars very often, but I will be using bools. Bools are very helpful and I will uh, show you why at a later time. Uh, but for now, that's all you really need to know. So um, in the next tutorial, I'll probably go over some special rules for these and what you need to watch out for when you're doing math uh, with these different types of data. But uh, for now, that's all. So please keep watching and subscribe. Look out for video number four. Thanks.